Okay, because my file upload only allows me to record 10 minutes at a time, this may, I may abruptly stop and then pick up the second half of this topic um, in, a, in another little video. But this lecture is about emotions, um, specifically, this is actually one of my favorite topics. Specifically, it's about the functions of emotions, some of the brain structures, and then a couple theories as to how we experience emotions. The thing I think is most important to emphasize on this topic is that the function of emotions from a biological perspective is that they are a, um, a call for attention. They are all systems alert. Um, and that from a biological perspective, there is no right emotions, there's no good emotions, there's no bad emotions. But it's our culture that tells us that some are good or some are bad. Sometimes people will say, I have a problem with, you know, a problem with anger. And from a biological perspective, there is no such thing as a problem with anger. Uh, anger is a physiological response to something that's happening in the environment. And you are called by your biology to pay attention to that. So it's intended to, if we think about emotions from the perspective of they are biological states um, that are supposed to, that we're supposed to pay attention to, I think that it's a, it's a helpful, it can be a helpful and an empowering way to think about our emotional experiences instead of this notion that somehow there's good ones and there's bad ones. And, and as the book Emotional Agility that you've heard me refer to before says that instead of saying, oh, I shouldn't feel this way, if we think about our emotions as, well, that's curious, if we should be curious about our emotions and what they say about us and what they say about the world around us. Or, so lean in to your emotions, the ones that you find pleasurable and the ones that you don't like so much because you don't like feeling that way. Um, and keep in mind that all emotions pass. They all change, right? Because our, our, our states change. So emotions serve a purpose. They serve a purpose to get our attention. There are three elements of emotions that it's important to, that we understand. Um, and those are, or I think it says elements, yeah, elements of emotion. One is the cognitive or the subjective. Um, that refers to as what I think, what I see, what this experience, how I interpret it, how I think about it right? This being told to stay at home all the time. How do I think about that? Do I think that's a good thing or do I think that's a bad thing? Because this is the first, um, this is the first element, how we evaluate the event. And then we have the biological. We have the biological or the physiological. What does this do to my heart rate, to my blood pressure, to my, uh, to my digestive system? How does this change how I internally, how my body feels? And then the third piece, which is really the piece when we talk about I have a problem with, the, the, the behavioral piece. How do I express it? So if I interpret this event as sad, right, this is bad that I have to stay at home, my body will feel a certain way, and I'm likely to express that in a certain way. Um, this is really what cognitive behavioral therapy is about. Cognitive behavioral therapy is about changing the way I think about a situation, that first stage in the, in the emotional response, which then theoretically changes the way my body responds and then changes the way I express, right? If on the other hand, I think, well, this is kind of a cool thing. I kind of like, you know, being able to stay at home with my pets and not having to go anywhere. If I think about that different, it probably will have a different uh, reaction internal. It'll probably cause a different internal state and I'm likely to act differently, right? So these three pieces. There is one theory though, and that's called the facial feedback hypothesis that argues that if I change the way I emote, if I change the way I behave, if I change my facial expression, it will in fact change the way my body feels and it will change the way my mind, the way I think about things. So in other words, if I walk around, um, if I walk around with a smile on my face all the time, I may experience the world in a better way. I'll feel better. My emotions will be more positive. If, on the other hand, I walk around with this frown on my face all the time, I will experience the world in a, in a sadder sort of way. There are some method actors. There are some, uh, um, some actors who... Uh, who do this, who like live their character. I remember reading an interview about the guy that was the 
actor for Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln the movie, and Lincoln was a, a very depressed person, and he said he was just felt depressed all the time. I believe it's that fellow that did, um, he did one of the, uh, one of the Batman movies also said the same thing. But anyway, but the idea is that if I carry my facial expression in a certain way, I will also experience that emotion. It's facial feedback hypothesis. Also on this slide, you'll notice that there are six black and white images and six baby images. And this comes from the research of a fellow named Eckelman. And Eckelman was an anthropologist and he concluded that there were six, well, it depends on which textbook you read, but there are five or six. There were six what he called universal emotions. And he showed these facial expressions to people all over the world and they identified the same, um, they, gave, they gave these facial expressions the same label. And so the, that's what the black and white ones are represented. But the baby pictures then suggest that even as babies were already programmed with these six universal human emotions all over the world. But that's the six universal emotions. I will eventually put up something called a, a feeling wheel onto your class materials. I stole that from my therapist a few years ago. But what it has is it has these six universal emotions and then from it all the different other feelings or all the different other emotions we might label. For instance, you might be feeling grief, right? And grief is universally, it's a form of sadness or you might be feeling anxiety and anxiety is a kind of fear. But the idea that all of our feeling states are grounded in these six can be, can be anchored in these six uh, universal emotions. The next slide on here is this one right here, is this guy. Um, and what it's intended to illustrate, so if you were to gaze at that dot in the middle, and I ask you which face appears to be, actually I can't read it, which face appears to be happier, because emotions are not processed in, emotions are processed in the right hemisphere, I'll just tell you right now, it should be the left face should appear to be happier than the right face if you are gazing at the dot. And that's because emotional, our ability to understand emotions is processed exclusively in the right hemisphere. So you're gonna see it, remember on the left, in the left side because there's that crisscross and you're right, right. Okay, moving on to the next slide here. You have some brain neurology on this next slide. This is called the amygdala hijack. If you remember from chapter two, the amygdala is that structure that's about anger and fear and your sympathetic, your fight or flight sympathetic nervous system and your amygdala responds very quickly. So we call it the amygdala hijack because when we are experiencing the world and that information, that sensory information comes through our occipital nerve, right? Our, our eyes, comes through our eyes to the back, that your amygdala, because she's about protecting you, you're gonna react to things quite quickly before you're even necessarily aware, right? So you're gonna, uh, you're gonna jump at the stick before you have a chance to go, oh, that's just a stick, that's not a snake. Or you may become defensive or yell at someone before you have really had a chance to think it through. Because your amygdala, which is so involved, so dedicated to saving you, to keeping you safe, is going to hijack all these other symptoms, systems, and you're going to respond before you have, um, before your frontal lobe, right, your executive center, has had time to process that. That's what's referred to as amygdala hijack. Uh, 